my soup smells really good. I've got a soup going as we're cruising today. So in the next set of vlogs, we're gonna cruise really gently because we don't have to be somewhere. We don't have miles to travel. So let's enjoy it. Oh, if only I knew how the day was going to unfold. Such a pretty lot. Debdale Lock comes with its own little cave, which some believe used to be the stables for boaters' horses, but there is evidence that it used to be a shop, and also the lock keeper, whilst waiting for his house to be renovated, lived in it for a while. So this is the plan, we're in Debdale Lock now, we're going to leave Debdale Lock and we are going to stay at the next village of Wolverley but we need to carry on to get water which is at Kidderminster and then we will be facing the wrong way so we will have to turn the boat round and then we'll come back and we'll stop in the village of Wolverley, it's a must see village apparently. I hope that nothing's round this bend like last time. It's a different bend, but it's still the same problem. You can't see what's around the corner. Gorgeous cliff though. Everything is starting to look a lot greener now and hopefully we have said goodbye to the freezing cold temperatures. There's this massive sense of achievement that we've got through, well, Alice Grace has got us through, another winter on the canals. There's a beautiful garden and house here and it has this narrowboat as well, it has a little narrowboat out the front. It's just gorgeous. It's a lot of house. A lot of cleaning. And another sign that winter is over is there are a lot more boats on the water, in particular hire boats. And I love seeing hire boats because that's how it all started for us. We fell in love with narrowboating by hiring narrowboats. Up there on the left hand side is a road which has been closed since 2019 when a water main burst and caused a landslide into the canal. There we go, you can see. Approaching the next lock, this one has a little cafe on the right hand side and then a pub on the left hand side. So walkers, it's a great stop. And it looks like this pub is full of gong boozlers, so I better make sure I do it properly. St John the Baptist Church in Wolverley in the distance 
and we're hoping by this evening we will be moored in the water not far from it. So we're at the next lock. We're just thinking this is a good place to moor when we get back. Oh, I see Cassandra. I see Cassandra. Beautiful, beautiful birds. We just don't often see them on the canal, but there is a river alongside here. As soon as we left that lock, everything started to go wrong. So we're not moving, we're stuck in something. We're hit in reverse in case there's anything around the prop, but it doesn't feel like there is anything around the prop. It feels like we're stuck in the silt. Let's see if that works. No, nope, it's still not moving. We're moving a bit, we're moving a tiny bit. But it, it looks like it's still. Again, that's good. I'm going to moor up very briefly at the lock landing and change the gas because I've just noticed the soup stopped cooking because the gas has gone. I don't know what happened to the sunshine. But we've got some nice refreshing rain. It's sleek. It's sleety. But we were determined to get to Kidderminster Lock, so we carried on. It's only a little bit of rain after all. another leaky gas this is the second time this has happened to us we've just changed our gas over onto the other one and as soon as we've changed the gas the valve is broken at the top of the gas bottle and it just leaks out gas it's happened to us twice now it's never happened to us before and then and this year this is the second time i don't know if it's a common thing it's good we managed to get stranded with no gas right near a mcdonald's so, because we have no gas, we can't have tea, but we can have tea. So, round two. The plan is to get through this lock and to get water, then to go back through the lock, more up outside Sainsbury's. I'm going to do the shopping while Mr M tries to find a gas. But there were more hurdles to come. One of those days. Um, I don't know what happened. We're having to pull the boat in. It's just jammed and it's not working. We've got nowhere to moor because it's just a slope of mud. So that is the problem. There is massive rope completely tightly wound around the prop shaft. 
plastic. I think it's coated in plastic. Oh, they look like threads. We're coming into the evening. We don't have a gas bottle that works. We don't have a boat that works. And we're not in a place you can moor very securely. <laughs> God. So I stood and held the boat in, Zephyr stood and inspected the boat, and Mr M buried himself in the weed hatch. We have to cross our fingers, and we have to cross our paws, Zeph. We're going to try and start Alice Grace and see if she starts and if she moves. Yes. Okay, she started. Oh, she's moving! She's moving! Oh, Alice Grace! And because of the unbelievable skills of Mr M, we were on our way again. Nothing else could go wrong, surely, could it? There's a, a working boat on the water point. It was tricky to get the boat near the water point, but we managed it. So while we wait for the rain to stop, just admiring the view outside the window of, of Clanford. So now we begin the process of reversing. There's no way we could have turned in that gap there. We would have got wedged. And because we go quite close to the edge when we're reversing, Zephyr just jumps off the boat. Come on, Zeph, this way. Yeah. Keep going, Zeph. walking we're coming around that way keep going up a bit good girl good girl that's it good girl we've seen a place to bring the boat in just alongside the bridge so we're winding the boat round so we can line it up with the bank for Zephyr to get back on girl. good girl keep going over the bridge good girl good girl that's it Good girl, we're coming to get you now. I'm not sure what all that was about. Now stay there, Zeph, come back. Good girl. What was that? Oh, it's a trolley. There's a trolley there. You can't get in, there's a trolley wheel. I don't believe it. We started leaning over when we were trying to get near the side for Zeph. But you, there's a trolley here. But that's we right on top of it. Two trolleys. Um. Come on. Yay! <laughs> what was that little adventure about? Did you make your own adventure? Honestly. It's now coming up to six o'clock in the evening. We still have no shopping. We still don't have any gas. But we have got stories that we will tell our grandchildren for years to come. And it all worked out in the end. I went over to the supermarket, I cooked the evening meal on the stove and we worked out where we could get gas in the morning and that's what we did. I don't know if you can hear that but the church bells are ringing. The birds are singing, it just feels gorgeous outside. Perfect time to explore Wolverley.
In 1200 AD, Sir John Atwood was imprisoned as he was fighting in Spain against the Saracens. Back in Warverley, Lady Atwood feared her husband dead as she had not heard from him for many years. However, on the morning she was due to remarry, he was found in the village, clothes tattered and feet fettered. All he remembers was being carried back to Warverley from his prison cell by a swan. So someone has created this incredible dragon-like carving out of a fallen tree. First butterfly of the season. flying around. It's just one of those days when the sky goes all grey and chucks down a week's worth of rain. And try as you might, overcoming one plight, a new one comes at you again. Your gas levels dip, your doggy jumps ship, the cupboards are empty and bare. Moving slower than stop, with a rope round your prop, unlikely you'll get anywhere. But the church bells are ringing, the nuthatch is singing, the butterfly opens each wing. There's a bat in the sky, that must signify that the winter is over, it's spring. <laughs> 